We've heard his name a lot this week, Sam Altman. He's now back as CEO of OpenAI after a brief ousting from the position by the former board. Now, investors are closely tracking these developments, namely for what it could mean for the generative AI space, which has dominated technology and business this year. Now, with Altman's return and new faces on the board, what does this mean? What does this mean for the future of open AI and more largely for the AI space? We want to bring an author advisor and a speaker specializing in the generative AI space, Nina Schick, here to discuss more. Nina, it's great to have you. So I'd love your perspective on everything that has played out over the last week, all starting last Friday, just about a week ago, when we got news that Sam Altman had been fired from open AI. Now he's back at that top job in that position. What does this mean for open AI and the future of generative AI? Well, what a drama the last week has been. This has been the hottest story in tech, not least because nobody saw this coming, right? Including Sam Altman. Why was he fired? Um, and it basically looks like it came down to what I think is going to be a prevalent trend going forward for the development of artificial intelligence. You can almost see it as a schism between the doomers and the boomers, the rush of those who want to commercialize the new capabilities we seen with artificial intelligence and those who are saying, hey, wait a minute, this is dangerous. We should rethink these capabilities. So we should think about safety first. Um, with regards to open AI itself, I think that this has harmed their image because they were the poster child for generative AI and these new capabilities of AI that we see emerging. And yet the whole coup and then reinstatement of Sam Altman made them look quite amateurish, right? And the fact that he was only reinstated because basically the entire company threatened to walk. I think some of that initial sheen that they've had over the last year with Sam Altman really being the wunderkind of AI, literally courting global leaders, some of that will have been lost. But of course, uh, they will continue to develop these technologies. And now it looks like really look to commercialize them as well. So Nina, at OpenAI, is the damage already done when you have this much, this high profile of a fallout and then reinstatement and, and ultimately a shift that we've seen, it seems at least from the outside looking in, in the corporate culture and trust in some of the leaders at the company up to the board level. I think that is where they're going to be hit, right? With regards to trust, with regards to uh, you know their corporate governance structure. Like I said, for the past year, it's been about a year since ChatGPT came out. Uh, OpenAI has been riding high, and Sam Altman has really been kind of the epitome. I mean, he's a brilliant mind for you know the incredible advances that are now happening in AI research. Since the breakthroughs that have been pioneered uh, by OpenAI, but also other kind of uh, AI frontier research companies have really come to the fore uh, over the past 12 months. I mean, there has been a lot of intra competition between some of the companies, not only the big tech companies, but some of the other fr frontier AI companies. So I think that the incidents or what's happened over the last week with open ai will certainly serve them well you know other competitors like anthropic like google who isn't partnered with open ai you know they will be looking to kind of move into that space that kind of mythical space that open ai had occupied so i think that you know it it, it hurts their brand but will they continue to do incredible developments in AI research? Yes, absolutely. But it's a hotly contested space and others will be stepping up too. Nina, you mentioned, uh, going back to what you just said a minute ago about commercializing generative AI. How does open AI, or I guess, what does that strategy, what does that approach look like when you're talking about commercializing generative AI, chat GPT more effectively? So, I mean, for OpenAI in particular, this has always been slightly a quandary, right? Yeah. Because they were founded in 2015 with the mission to kind of protect AGI or super, to develop AGI or super intelligence for the benefit of humanity. And what ended up happening last year was that they released an incredibly sophisticated large language model, ChatGPT, which for the first time, really started to show us the beginnings of the so-called intelligence revolution, the capacity for AI systems to be able to augment and plug into human 
intelligent and creative processes, right? So for ChatGPT alone, for the past year, I've been speaking to multiple businesses who are thinking about how can we deploy a, a large language model like this within our organization to for efficiency, for cost cutting? And actually, can we use something like this also to generate revenue? Can it help us come up with new strategy, with new ideas, with new predictive analysis? And that's what we've been seeing over the past year, not only with OpenAI and its ChatGPT product, but really the development of large language models across kind of the spectrum of big tech and frontier AI companies. So it's also worth remembering that large language models are, are the rage today, but they're only one kind of generative model, right? These capabilities are going to continue to increase, not least because the incredible amount of talent flowing into the space, as well as the money and the fact that pretty much all of big tech have become AI first companies. So yeah. I think we will continue to see these capabilities being developed at an exponential rate, as well as the adoption curve being higher than any kind of general technologies we've seen in the past. I think it'd be bigger than the internet. So when it comes to the world of work, and and where the applications will be. Mm -hmm. That's really like asking how long is a piece of string? Because when you think of AI, it's more a meta technology than a technology itself. It's the technology that's going to enable platforms. It's going to enable applications. It's going to enable tools and products. So that's really what I see happening in the next few years with AI. Yeah, my family was certainly trying to rage on large language models over Thanksgiving, but we got distracted by that food, Nina. Just lastly, <laughs> while we've got you here, I gotta ask, when you've got this type of partnership that Microsoft announced earlier this year with OpenAI that came with a very hefty sum of capital that they're putting towards making sure that they've got the ability to develop on top of what OpenAI has already been able to introduce into the market, OpenAI burning through a lot of cash right now to make sure that ChatGPT can still run and everybody could run some kind of, you know, just boneheaded search queries at times. But at the other end of this, you've got a company in Microsoft that looks at this play out. Do they lose confidence? Do they have any of that waiver given the structure at OpenAI right now? Well, I mean, the kind of uh, word going around was that Satya Nadella, you know, the CEO of Microsoft, who actually, I think, emerged in this crisis looking almost like the only uh, adult in the room, wasn't told, you know, about what was about to happen uh, before Sam Altman was fired and that he was furious. Um, nonetheless, I think that they will continue to work with OpenAI because the fact of the matter is, is that they have built an incredible company that has pioneered sensational breakthroughs in artificial intelligence that have in a short space of time completely changed the landscape and have completely changed the world i mean the release of chat gpt will be a historically seismic moment and although there is a lot more competition it isn't only the partnership between microsoft and open ai you see lots of flourishing partnerships for example google's with anthropix or even if you look at who aws is partnering up with or the work that other companies like meta are doing um there's enough kind of gains to go around it's hmm. what is more interesting for me is just how much impetus and market moving impetus there is with regards to the attention that all of big tech and frontier AI companies are doing now to actually really commercializing this, these capabilities. Yeah, fascinating insight and analysis as always. Nina Schick, who is the author, advisor, and speaker specializing in generative AI. Nina, great to see you. Thanks so much for taking the time.